Hey there folks, let's go ahead and take a look at a few more functionalities in web intelligence. Uh, multiple data providers, uh, merging these data providers or as I've heard some people call it uh, merging tables. Uh, consume data from Excel for which we'd use rich client and then relate to positioning between tables on the same tab. Go ahead and create a new report from the eFashion universe. eFashion, select my universe and I'll bring in the revenue information and also the SKU numbers for the product. So I'll bring in SKU number and uh, for measures I'm going to bring in the revenue information let me call this data provider revenue always a good idea to rename your data provider when you have multiple data providers I'm going to run my query save my report demo reports line revenue okay I'll double click on the column heading here so it expands the width and accommodates the entire name of the column okay when we talk of multiple data providers what we are essentially saying is have data come in into your report from multiple sources now your multiple sources could either be the same universe or a different universe or a PEX query, a text file, an Excel file and so on. For a text and Excel file you would have to use rich client which is installed on your machine. I'll talk about that next but right now let's go ahead and create a different query or a second query based on the universe. What this will have is some information that's not available in my current universe, which is the unit price. So I select a universe. Sorry, I'll go back one step. So I go back to, I go to data access, create new data provider, and say from universe. Select this universe called eFashion price information. Select my SKU number, uh, SKU description, and... Uh, what else? Q numbers, Q description, and sold that unit price. I'm going to call this query unit price. Run my queries. So you see now I have two tables, uh, each of which has data coming from both the data providers. Let's go ahead and arrange the available objects in my web intelligence report by the different queries. So I'm able to differentiate between uh, the queries and the objects, or basically differentiate between the objects that are coming from the different queries. Now, if I want to bring in information from both these data providers into one table, what I essentially have to do is merge the two data providers, or in terms of a database, I say, you know, join the two tables, or even as you do in Excel, you know, do a VLOOKUP and things like that. So to do so, what you do here is go to Data Access, go to Merge, select SKU number from here and SKU number from the unit price data provider here. Say OK. And I am going to create a column onto the right of SKU number here and then bring in the unit price. So I do right click, insert a column onto my right, bring in the sold that or unit price here. So here you have your unit price available for each of the SKU numbers. One other thing to keep in mind is uh, if you wanted to bring in a dimension from one of the data providers which is not available in the other data provider so let's say in this case Q description and you want to bring it into this table you cannot bring it as such because web intelligence doesn't allow you to bring dimensions that are just available in one data provider as such to bring it in what you have to do is create a new variable let's call it Q description variable 
it has to be a detail object. I'm going to say skew description. Double click on the skew description so it comes into the formula tab here or the formula text box here. Associated to a dimension. So I have to associate it to a dimension that I have already merged. I could just select this queue number or this one here from unit price. I'm going to say OK. Click OK here. After I do so, I should be able to bring in the description into this table. There you go. I'll double click here towards the end of this column header so it expands the column width and uh, you can see the complete heading and all the values come, you know, nothing's truncated. Uh, so what you keep in mind when you merge data providers is you can bring in measures from multiple data providers as far as you have merged these data providers and you can also bring in uh, dimensions that are present only in one data provider as far as you create a variable from that dimension and associate that variable to one of the other so you know dimensions that you have merged uh, one other thing we'll take a look at here is bringing in data from Excel how do we do that uh, we do that in rich client we cannot do that in the web version so I'll go and log into the rich client maybe rich client that I have installed on my machine Okay, login as. Did I save my other report? Let me just go click on save once more. Come back to my very rich client. Say open. I'm going to go to the enterprise machine or my server and uh, go to demo reports click on line revenue open up the same report I'm going to delete the second data provider that we created from a universe and instead bring in that, da that data from an Excel file so I open the report to go into design mode go back here arrange it by query so here we have my unit price I'm going to go in and delete the second data provider. Before that, let me quickly show you how you can unmerge a merge dimensions. Just right click on there and say unmerge. You don't necessarily need to do this if you're anyways deleting a data provider, but I'm just showing it to you. You go back to data access, click on edit. Go to unit price here and say delete. Yes. Apply changes and close. Uh, you obviously see an error here because now you know it was referencing. It's still referencing the data provider that you deleted. I'm going to leave it there for now. Let's go ahead and create a new data provider. Uh, you could either create it from here, as I showed earlier, and you see you have all these extra options, or you could even create it from here, wherein you would say add a query from Excel. I'm going to browse for my source file. I've saved it on my computer. Uh, POBJ data, e fashion price. You can specify the range of fields that you want or all the fields. You can uh, specify if the first row has the column heading or not. I'm going to leave it all as default. Go on next. Bring in all the details available in the Excel file. Run my queries. Insert my table, uh, insert the table in, uh, in the current report itself. So here you have uh, both the tables again, one with the revenue, the other with the uh, unit price. As we did earlier, we're going to go merge our data, select SKU number from here and SKU number from the second query. You see I haven't renamed it, but uh, I should have ideally renamed it to SKU, uh, I mean unit price or something like that. Okay, anyways, I select my SKU number from both the queries and still the OK button is not highlighted. Why? Because when I hover over the SKU number from the first query, you will see that the type is number. Whereas when it comes to the SKU number from the second query, the type is a string. You cannot merge a number to a string. So you go back to edit. You cannot change anything for the SKU number coming from the universe, but 
So it's the second query which let me rename uh, unit price Excel is coming from an Excel file. You can change the type of your object. So instead of string, I'm going to call it number. Run my queries again. Save my report. This time I'm just going to save it uh, on my folder locally or whatever it comes as default. Oops, I think I ended up saving it on the server, but it doesn't matter. Let me go back and uh, try to merge them now. SKU number from here and uh, SKU number from here and the OK button's highlighted this time. OK. And I bring in the unit price here between the description and uh, sales revenue and there it's back again. Let's go fix the description quickly. Uh, edit, right click on the variable, say edit. You see how it's showing some garbage value. Just go back and select SKU description. It's coming from your second data provider, which is from Excel. Associated to a dimension, which is the SKU number from the Excel. I'll click on OK. OK. Yes. And there you have the description again available. So that's it about merging two data providers uh, or merging multiple data providers. Uh, that's it also about bringing in data from Excel. And uh, one other thing that I'm going to quickly touch on is something called relative to positioning. Let me go back to my report from the uh, web interface. I'm going to close this or actually I'm going to save over again. So instead of Excel, let's going to go back and save the original version that we had. And let's say in your first query, you had only very little data. Uh, and now, now let's say I bring in the year information and uh, I bring in category. I put a filter on category, put a prompt on it, run my queries. For the categories, I'm just going to bring in a couple of them. Okay. Let me insert a new report. Add report. Bring in my category. I'm not going to bring in this queue number. And bring in my sales revenue and let's say uh, don't pay attention to the data but let's say you have a table with data coming from elsewhere or for whatever reasons you have a second table in your same uh, in your same uh, report or in the same tab why is it not coming up okay there it's come up Okay, let's say I bring in data from uh, my second data provider. So I have SKU number, SKU description, and uh, unit price. Now let's say at some point uh, when you refresh the report, your data in the first table is going to increase or you're going to have more number of rows. What happens in such cases? I'm going to bring in much more data this time. Click OK. Okay, you see now one table is overriding the other table. I have data from this table and uh, it's hidden behind this other table, the second table. And, and so in such cases that you have data in two separate tables on the same tab, what you essentially want to do is associate the positioning of your reports related to each other or associate the position of your blocks. So let's talk about that. Uh, I'm going to go to format table on the first table. I'm going to call it my revenue table. Okay, I'm going to go into the second one here. When you right click towards the end, there would be an option called format table. You don't see it in the screen because it's cut off, but uh, let me rename this as my unit price table. And in the layout option here, you see there's something called relative position. 
right now it's saying from none and that's why the tables were overriding so I'm going to say relate to position from the bottom edge of revenue table and I could just select like one centimeter if I want it say OK the minute I do that your second table is going to drop down and always leave some uh, distance between it's always going to leave some distance between the two tables depending on how much distance you have selected in your format table layout option in this case it's one I could even I don't know if I have an option to do zero well I could just go all the way down to like 0 0.1 maybe even zero I haven't checked that and it will appear very close to the other table and what would happen anytime the data in your first table changes let's say if I take away some data and click on OK my second table is going to position itself relative to the first one so that way it doesn't override you also have the option to uh, associate your tables uh, layout based on the right uh, I mean the horizontal position based on the right edge of one table or the other I'm going to remove this and say none and uh, same way it would show up on the right hand side always but uh, you could uh, play around more with that but uh, yeah that's it about multiple data providers bringing in data from Excel merging in your data providers or merging your tables and uh, also about relate to positioning uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. As always, uh, please feel free to leave me your comments and uh, don't forget to vote. Thank you. Thank you very much.